So in this video, we're gonna do one of my favorite things, which is to reverse engineer VEX robots. So when you look at the design that someone put out um, this year or last year or previous years at all, um, you're looking at kind of how they built and you're learning the style in which they built. Uh, there's a lot of teams that are really efficient with spacing, a lot of teams that are really efficient and uh, really powerful when it comes to structure. Uh, you're also looking at designs of how they you know, powered certain mechanisms, um, how they made them efficient and still were able to make it very, very compact. One of the biggest challenges in VEX Robotics is getting your design compact enough to fit into the size requirements. Anyone could build a contraption uh, that could do the maneuver. You just want to be quick, efficient, and consistent about it. So we're going to look at reverse engineering 8059A. Uh, if you've watched their reveal video, if you've looked at any of the stuff on the forums, you've seen all their pictures, uh, all the designs kind of there, but they don't, of course, break it down. Uh, and I wanted to kind of break it down so that I could better understand how to do it. And we could all agree, it is not the end-all be-all design. Uh, it is a very simple design that's just focused on mobile bases. So that's all I'm focusing on is mobile bases. I've got some starter teams that are looking at starting with the mobile base lift and then how they can work off of that. And this is how we're doing that. So we as a group have uh, gone and drawn this in SketchUp just to kind of help us along uh, based off of what we can find in the pictures. Uh, what we found was a 35 hole long chassis. Uh, it is 35 by 35. It's made with simple two hole C channels, uh, two on each side, and then you got your five hole C channel coming down the middle. That's pretty obvious. One of the things I liked about how they did it was they turned in the C channel so that the uh, flat bearings are hiding on the inside. Really compact, really simplified design. And they used a standoff plus a spacer as their uh, spacing for this. They also used the five hole C channel uh, to separate them across. And then one of the things I've always kind of looked at and kind of seen is whenever you're looking at how people gear things with Omni wheels, uh, are we using it very, very compact because of the width of an Omni wheel or are they making it wide? So there's four hole spacing in between. And it looks like, and I, I put it on here as, you know, drive train gearing magic uh, is what's going on back here. This is. Uh, I looked at it, they've got what appears to be three or four motors back there, uh, all in this weird configuration, and that's all powering just the back motor. So the front motors are all free running. You can see that we've got these uh, five hole C channels kind of built up in the back, uh, and that's the spacing that allows them to run a chain coming all the way forward onto a sprocket, uh, and that sprocket is actually what's running this. Now as far as how this is uh, on there and attached to this uh, miniature four bar, not sure. Uh, we're gonna have to do some testing and kind of figure that out, but I'm really interested to see uh, what the kids kind of come up. So we've got this four bar, like I mentioned, uh, and it's got two, uh, two C channels here, and it's got a small C channel up top. Um, and from what I've figured out is they were really clever and they used these, the 45 degree gussets uh, to attach. Um, and we, of course, have only drawn it. We haven't tested it uh, to see how well this works, and they may have done some uh, you know, some magical stuff in between. But that's kind of what we've got as far as the base uh, of the beginning. And then we've got this angle over here. Now, they've used this plexi uh, throughout. They've kind of placed it in there. And if you look at the videos or look at the pictures, you can see that it's very unique in the way it's set up. Um, we're gonna have to do a little bit of testing to figure out. Uh, and what I wanted to do is uh, have the kids kind of build a replica of this and learn a lot about how they utilize it. I think there's a lot of great stuff from this design. I think there's also a lot of things that still need to be modified. Obviously, it's the very beginning of the season, um, but this is a great start for the kids to kind of get going, uh, kind of get an idea of how to build and what to do. Also, if you look at the specs from their VEX forum post, you can see that they have uh, have not utilized all their motors. Uh, there's actually motors that have not been placed on here, so we need to figure out kind of where we would want to use those and how we would want to use those. Do we want to put power uh, from the drivetrain onto uh, the front motors in some way? Do we want to kind of adjust the way that's set up uh, just to kind of get an idea of what we're doing? Yeah, we're just looking at one of the great robots uh, that's already kind of come out at the beginning of the season that's really good with mobile bases. Uh, looking at one of the ways they've done that, uh, 8059A, um, all credit to you guys, and there's a whole lot of things that I still haven't been able to figure out exactly what is going on on here, uh, but the design is pretty nice. Uh, so we're going to look at kind of how we can implement some of the elements of this, um, if not, you know, take away a chunk and then replace it with our own ideas. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you get a chance to uh, reverse engineer and kind of look at some designs that are out there and learn from those. Um, and have good luck this season.